Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 4. In this tutorial we're going to create the ability to display a question on the screen via a C Sharp script. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial, still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we've briefly explored a very simple C Sharp script and we basically know how they function now inside methods, for example. So we're going to take that knowledge and expand it a little bit more and we're going to change what this question says up here. So all we really need to know before we get into it is this section right here. So we need to change whatever this text box right here says as well as the text inside these answers. So we need to keep in mind that this component is known as the text component and we're changing the text subcomponent and the same applies to all the answers as well. So we just need to keep that in mind for when we're coding this script. So how do we do this? Well firstly let's right click, create, C Sharp script. Now this specific script is going to be only to display things on the screen. So we're going to have a completely separate script that will generate a question for us a little later on. So for now, let's just call this script uh, question display. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Let's open the other one up there. There we go. We've opened the right one now. So as I said, this script is going to be using some UI elements to display things on our screen. Therefore, we need to tell the script that we're using some UI elements. And if you recall from the last tutorial, we need to add an extra line up here in the namespace to tell it that we're using some UI. So underneath using Unity Engine, we just need to type using Unity Engine dot UI semicolon. And like I say, what this will do is you can think of it as a way of the script recognizing that it has to use some UI lines of code that we're going to tell it to. So let's now think about this logically. We're going to have to define a couple of variables here. The first one is going to be the text itself. So that will be the question. And then there's going to be four more, which are going to be the answers. So A, B, C, or D. So we can define five variables. So let's get rid of this annotation right here because we don't currently need it. Um, obviously we're going to expand the script a little further on as and when we need to because it's not just going to be as simple as uh, what we do in this tutorial because once we start integrating other scripts into each other we'll obviously need to add in much more to make them able to talk to each other. So for now Let's just focus on getting this script to work. Always start small and build upwards from there whenever you're programming. So let's start by saying public game object. And you'll notice G and O are capitalized. It is vital that you do have the capitalization there. And we're going to call this uh, screen question and semicolon. So what we've done there is we've said we have an object that we're going to use in this script. It is a game object, which means it's an object in the scene itself, and it's called screen question. Now, obviously, the script doesn't know what that currently is, but don't worry. Later on, we will tell the script what object screen question actually is. The same also applies for the objects we're going to use now. So we're going to have the text on each answer box. So we use the same principle here by saying public game object and then answer A. And great thing is we can actually copy that line of code and then we can paste it a couple more times and just change the name as we need to. So A, B, C and D. So we now have four variables in our script. Those four variables are the main aspects of what this quiz app actually is, the question and the answers. So ideally what we do need to do is we need to have this in void start. So I am going to write this in void start, but we will end up moving it into void update when we've built a bit more of this app. 
So for now, what we're going to say is when the game starts, we're going to say screen question dot get component. If you remember earlier, I said we need to deal with that component that's called text. So we're telling the script at this point that we need to get hold of a component. In spiky brackets, we then tell it what component it is we want to deal with. Like I said, it's text. So close spiky bracket. Then we need some parentheses. So open close bracket and then dot and then that sub component. And if you remember, that sub component was also called text. So we type text. So now what we've done here is we have accessed that text box that is inside our object. So whatever we put here after the equals will display inside that text box. So if we put in there our actual question again, how much wood could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? And then quote again and semicolon. So that's our question. Next thing we need to do is we need to say what's answer A, what is answer B, what is answer C, and what is answer D. So what we can do is we can actually type again answer A dot get component and in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text. So we've basically repeated that getting component function, except we've applied it to answer A instead of the screen question. So we'll make that equal to a lots and lots. And then another trick like we did up here where we copied the actual variable, we can copy that line of code. We can place it below and below and below. And we just need to change things where we need to. So we'll change that to B, change that to C, Change that to D. Again, B, C, and D. And instead of lots and lots, let's have uh, none. Hardly any. And then six, just, just because. So therefore, we have created our question and our possible answers. So the great thing about this is that although we're going to put this in start at the moment, when we've advanced this script a bit more and created our generating script, we are then able to actually manipulate this even further with different variables. But for now, like I say, we just need to make sure that this is in place. So let's save that script. Let's head back into Unity and just allow it to compile. And what I'm going to do to kind of illustrate that this does actually work is I am going to delete that text and just put uh, insert question. And I'm also going to change the text in A to A. So it is just that. So we can see here that if we apply this script to the scene and we apply each of those variables to the correct places, everything will update when we play the game. So to do that, we need to add a new game object. So up here, game object, create empty. And let's rename this empty game object. So right click, rename, and we'll call it master control. And I'm going to move this to the top of the scene up here, top of the hierarchy, I should say. And now this master control object is going to hold most of the scripts that we need to deal with to make this game functional. So let's drag and drop the question display script up here. And over here in the hierarchy, in the, sorry, in the inspector panel, you will see that we do have those variables right there, all five of them. They currently say non game object. Now this is where we tell the script which object to reference when it changes. So this screen question, the one that we changed to how much wood could a woodchuck chuck, is going to be this question text right here. So if we drag and drop this over here, that's going to tell the script that screen question is this object here. Same applies to the answers. So A, B, C, and D. 
Now, it is important you get those correct. Although they're all called text, they do apply to their each individual buttons. So let's press play now. And there we go. You can see that the game in its play mode, these buttons do actually work, which is great. That's exactly what we need. So realistically, we have to kind of work out how we're going to deal with it from here. So the way it's all going to work is we are going to generate a question which passes it to that question display and it displays it. We also then need to work with the buttons as well. And that's where things start to get not complicated, but I think more than anything, it needs to kind of uh, understand a little more how it's all going to work. Now, one massively important thing to deal with here is the fact that scripts are going to interact with each other. So before we end this tutorial, we're going to do a little bit of prep work ready for the next tutorial because coding gets a little bit more, not complicated, but for me, fun. For some people, yeah, I suppose it could be complicated, but if we prepare, we're not going to have any problems. So ultimately, this script is going to um, contain a lot of variables because we need it to understand that we're feeding it a question. So let's put in place some more variables ready for when we have um, the other script feed it the question. So we're going to put public and we're also going to put the word static. So this word static means that another script can feed information to this script. And realistically, you've got to remember that trying to get scripts to talk to each other is going to be somewhat easy in the long run, because in the sense of this particular app that we're creating, it's not complicated. It, obviously, in bigger, larger games, there's different ways to deal with it. But for now, because this is a simple app to an extent, being able to use the word static to talk to each script is going to be the best, quickest and easiest option to do. So the type of variable is going to be a string because we're going to feed it some text, which, for example, could be this bit of text right here. And we're going to call it um, new question. So, like I say, preparing for uh, the next stage of all of this to come. Uh, and obviously we're going to need uh, answers as well. So the same principle applies by saying public, static, string, and we need, so we're gonna have new A, and then obviously we can copy and paste once again, just to kind of speed things up a little bit. So A, B, C, D, and save. So, we are pretty much ready to go even further into development. And just in this tutorial, we've created this script. Now to a lot of people, this may look complicated. To veteran programmers, this is just a, something quick and simple. But if you are new to programming and you've just got this far in the tutorial and you've written this script and you've never programmed before, well done. I think that's a massive step forward for anybody who's looking to get some programming done. So always starting small and building up is the best and easiest way to learn programming. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to create that question holder script. So that is the one that's going to basically generate uh, any type of question. So we want random questions to appear with uh, their answers on the screen. So you could have, say, a thousand questions and you want one to randomly appear. So we're going to create the script which will generate those questions and then feed it to our main display script. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.